Coming up, the State Fair Open. High school students gear up for Friday Night Football and the sniper attacks near Washington having an effect across the country. You're watching Arkansas's fastest growing news station. This is today's THV. I think they're scared to get gas and, and scared to, to um, stop at the grocery store. The sniper shootings in the Washington, D.C. area hit close to home for one woman in the state. That's our top story tonight at 6. I'm Karen Brady. Ann and Andy both have the night off. Well, today, another shooting at a gas station is reported. This one in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Officials haven't confirmed a connection between it and the other shootings, but they blocked off the interstates and other main routes in the area looking for a white van witnesses apparently saw driving away from the scene. Shannon Taylor caught up with a woman here who's paying close attention to every detail. Shannon? Karen Patrice Hargrave is from Woodbridge, Virginia, where residents are watching their backs. She's spending the month working here in Arkansas, but her mind is on the events back home. It's three and a half weeks until Election Day, and things are heating up in Arkansas. That's why Patrice Hargrave is back in the place she grew up, helping the Democratic Party pull in some votes. Oh, it's wonderful to be back in Arkansas. But several times a day, she's in touch with her boyfriend back home to see if he and her other friends are safe. It makes me miss them a little bit more. The area where they live is now marked by yellow tape and crime scene investigators. You see a lot of kids and families running around, and... You don't think about it being a crime area at all. But she stopped at the gas station in Fredericksburg and shopped near the Michaels store there. Scenes of two of the shootings. And that always brings it close to home when you see that it happened in a place that we walked in and out of the stores. Patrice is relieved to be far away from the danger. Well, my parents are glad that I'm here. Um, and I guess for my own safety, I'm happy. But for my friends and family that are in Washington and the surrounding areas, of course, I worry about them and want to know that at a moment's notice, I can check in and make sure that they're safe. So that's what she does several times a day until she can see them face to face. I mean, I know that if they haven't caught the person, I'll try to take extra precautions. But um, I mean, it's a great community and there's wonderful people. And I certainly want to go back to my regular life once it's over. Now, none of the shootings have happened right in Woodbridge, where Patrice is from. If the sniper does strike there, Patrice says that would really cause her to worry. Karen? Thanks, Shannon. Well, there will be no high school football games tonight in Fredericksburg, Virginia, where the latest shooting took place. Other D.C. area schools have canceled all outdoor activities, including field trips, open lunches, and sports practices. Now, first view weather from Chief Meteorologist Ed Buckner. Well, even though skies are mostly cloudy, it was a little bit of a warmer day today than we've seen the past couple of days. We did see some breaks in the clouds this afternoon, but right now they have clouded right back up again. So we're going to keep clouds in tonight's forecast. Let's look at temperatures. And again, I mentioned as it was a little warmer, we made it into the 70s today. It's still 70 in Little Rock, 72 Fort Smith, 73 in Shreveport, 77 in Dallas. Now, they were close to 80 today. We will see temperatures like that here tomorrow. And the first day of your weekend looks like a warm one, but the second day of your weekend holds some big changes. And we'll talk more about your forecast in just a few minutes, Karen. The best of both. Thanks, Ed. Well, if you notice the smell of fried food in the air, it's probably coming from the Arkansas State Fair. The annual event kicked off today at noon, and it's scheduled to run through next Sunday. The 10-acre midway is filled with carnival rides, game booths, and stages for live musical performances. Be sure and have plenty of cash on hand, though, because checks, credit cards are not accepted. You've got 10 days, but some just can't resist the first day of the State Fair. Gates opened at the 36th, at the 63rd Annual State Fair at noon today. TJ Holmes is there. He joins us with info you may need before heading out there. TJ? That's right, Karen. Well, tonight is one of the biggest nights out here. And one of the big things that the general manager is talking about out here at the fair is that they have more discounts and special promotions than ever before. Like tonight is 50 cents Friday. You can actually go pick up an admission ticket for 50 cents at any Harvest Foods or affiliated food store. But even if you are not heading out here tonight, coming in the next 10 days, there are some things you need to know before heading out to the fair. Before the fun begins, you've got to find a place to park. Fairground parking on and near the grounds is $4, and security constantly patrols these lots. At the gate, tickets will be $5 for adults and 3 for children and senior citizens. You may want to make sure you have enough cash once inside. The ATMs on the grounds charge a $4 transaction fee, and there's no re-entering if you want to leave the fair for a while. After entering, don't put your wallet away so quickly. Just inside, you'll find the ride coupons. 
individually, they're 75 cents, and many of the main rides require five or six of them. On the midways, you'll find a number of game booths, as always. You'll get a number of proposals from them as you walk by. This is something else you can expect to see and hope it's not you, parents looking around for their kids. ID wristbands will be available. Medical personnel are also on standby. There's no shortage of food, of course. Now, one thing that won't cost you here, seeing and feeding livestock. You can even milk a cow. And after all those rides, playing those games, petting livestock, and possibly milking a cow, you can use one of the fair's newest features, hand sanitizers placed around the grounds. Now, of course, the hand sanitizers are brand new this year, but they're also, you ask maybe after 63 years, what else could be new here? You ask anybody out here what's new, this is one of the first things that's going to come out of their mouth, fried Twinkies. For those of you who thought that a Twinkie was just a little too healthy and should be dipped in a vat of grease. Now, of course, the fair has to be uh, competing tonight for people with the Alltel Arena game. The Lakers and the Grizzlies playing and also Friday night high school football. Well, many of the fair officials believe the Friday night football will help them because the fair doesn't close until 12 tonight. Maybe the kids will get done at the games and head out here. So uh, that's it from the fair. Uh, there's plenty more. If you can't make it out tonight, you got nine more days to catch up with the fried Twinkie, Karen. <laughs> I just don't know about that. <laughs> You'll have to let me know, though. I will. I will. Thanks, CJ. Well, a big lineup of entertainers is scheduled to perform this week. Rock Group 38 Special will take the stage tonight at 730. And country artist Carolyn Don Johnson and Keith Urban will perform tomorrow night, also starting at 730. Well, no state fair would be complete without a wide selection of fattening foods. And this year's fair is no exception. Vendors are offering everything from the traditional to the unusual. If you like corn dogs, candy apples, and funnel cakes, there are plenty of those. But if you want something a little different, try the deep fried Twinkies that TJ just mentioned. And if that's not scary enough, there are also deep fried candy bars. In the, in the THB poll question tonight, we ask, what is your favorite fair food? Log on to our website at todaysthb.com and choose from the several options that we've listed for you. We'll share the results tonight on the 10 o'clock difference. In a THB update, the Little Rock School Board has approved a plan for evaluating more than a dozen academic programs during the next 17 months. In September, District Judge Bill Wilson, Jr. found that the school district had complied with most of the terms of its 1998 desegregation plan. Wilson released the district from court monitoring in all but the area of academic program evaluations. School officials say a compliance plan and new rules for doing evaluations has been sent to the Federal Office of Desegregation Monitoring for approval. In other news, an attorney whose client sued the city of Little Rock has surrendered his Arkansas law license. David Henry represented Nora Harris, who was upset about the way the city was going to pay for the Clinton Library. Now, last week, the case was dismissed on Henry's request, but Nora Harris responded that Henry didn't have permission to do that. Henry is also accused of converting about $15,000 of another client's money to his personal use. And in West Little Rock, the Build for a Cure Idea House officially opens this weekend. Tours of the home will raise money for the Susan G. Komen Foundation. The house is decorated by some of the state's top designers. There are three bedrooms, a kitchen, a family room, and a spacious back patio. Tours of the home start tomorrow, October 12th, and continue through Sunday, November 3rd. The cost to get in, $20, and the proceeds, as we mentioned, go to fight breast cancer. State health officials say Arkansas has had one of the worst rabies outbreaks in recent years. More than a dozen animals around the state have been diagnosed with the deadly disease. That's why it's so important to have your pet vaccinated for rabies, and you can do that for free tomorrow. The Central Arkansas Rescue Effort, or CARE, will be giving free rabies shots to pets tomorrow at the Little Rock Animal Shelter. Now, in addition to that, they are providing a free spay and neuter service. For more information, you can call the Little Rock Animal Shelter at the number on your screen, 376-3067. Well, if you have a child, it's important to have their photos stored on a computer desk so it will be easier to find them if they are ever lost or taken. Well, coming up next, we'll tell you about several Morgan Nick photo ID days going on around the state this weekend. And of course, Chief Meteorologist Ed Bugner says we should have sunshine tomorrow. We'll have a look at our weekend forecast right after this break. What do we want? Zero rebates! What do we want? Zero percent financing! Backed by overwhelming...
overwhelming demand. Claim Chevrolet is tripling rebates up to $9,000. Plug it to 0% financing for up to 60 months. 2003 S10 pickups and Cavaliers. Regular cabin extended cab Silverados. Blazers and Trailblazers. Even 2003 Tahoes and Suburbans. Just $189 down delivers. Payments from $189 a month. Triple rebates or 0% financing. Rush to Crane Chevrolet now because the Crane team got them. You're watching Arkansas's fastest growing news station with Andy Pearson and Jensen, Chief Meteorologist Ed Buckner, and Craig O'Neill on Sports. This is today's THV at 6. Now, Ed, you mentioned a little earlier that we could have the best of both worlds, a little summer, a little fall like this weekend. You got it. That's a good way to put it. So you just pick your favorite and <laughs> head on out to the fair because we've got a little bit of everything to talk about. And we've even got some rain in the forecast this weekend, but it's at nighttime in between those two temperature extremes. So Saturday night, early Sunday morning, a chance for showers and then things will taper off and it'll get much cooler for Sunday. Here's a look at what's going on around the nation tonight. We have a stationary front to the southeast, lots of clouds, lots of low-level moisture trapped at the surface. We did see a few breaks in the skies earlier, but really looking at mostly cloudy skies all over the Mid-South. Here comes the big weather maker for the weekend. This front is going to pack quite a punch as it moves through the Central Plains tonight moves through Nebraska and Kansas tomorrow and into Arkansas tomorrow afternoon. Behind it, temperatures are much cooler, and you can see there are scattered showers and thunderstorms along it. We can't rule out a chance of that happening again when you're sleeping, most likely Saturday night and early on Sunday morning. That's the time frame it looks like right now. That could change a little bit, but it looks like that's the time frame. There's the satellite picture. We saw breaks in the clouds. Now we're back to mostly cloudy conditions all over the place. Not a whole lot of change anywhere you go. 70 in Little Rock, 71 in Springfield, 77 in Dallas. It's 80 in San Antonio, 86 in Midland, 82 in Amarillo. Warmth out here. Cooler in the east because of the clouds and the rain. 74 in Asheville, 75 in Atlanta, 81 in Panama City, Florida. Record high today, 97, set in 1963. While the following year, 1964, we saw our record low happen. That was 36 degrees. Average high, 77. Last year, we only made it to 72 degrees. Today. 73, so about like last year, but still a little below normal, but warmer than it's been the past couple days. 62 was our morning low, and that was with a lot of low clouds and fog. 70 currently, dew point 61, humidity 73%. The pressure's on the high side slightly, and the winds are out of the southwest at six miles an hour. Southwesterly breeze helped warm us up a little bit today, even though we did see a lot of cloud cover. 69 in Harrison and 68 in Batesville and Jonesboro. Most of the rest of the state in the 70s, Hope's at 69, but Pine Bluff's at 70, Monticello's at 71, El Dorado's at 72 degrees. 69 in Conway and Cabot and Heber Springs, 70 in Stuttgart, 71 in Benton, and 70 also in Moralton. Here's a look at Saturday's timeline. We'll start out at 60 degrees, 74 at noon, on our way to a high temperature of 80 degrees tomorrow afternoon, and that is with a little bit of afternoon sun showing up. So temperatures each day have been a little bit warmer. Two days ago it was 57. Yesterday, 60-something. Today, 70-something. Tomorrow, I think we will come real close to that 80-degree mark. Tonight, mostly cloudy. Patchy fog again, developing mainly after midnight. It won't be as widespread as what we saw last night, but patchy fog back in the forecast. Calm winds and a low temperature of 60 degrees. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, a little warmer than today, a high of 80. Southwest winds at 5 to 10, helping to heat us up and dry out the atmosphere a little bit more, so I think we'll see a little bit more sunshine tomorrow than what we've been seeing. Here's a look ahead. 80 tomorrow, then on Sunday, boy, a big difference. 64 the high temperature on Sunday with, again, that morning chance of rain. I'd put a chance at about 30% Sunday morning. Then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, very much like fair weather, except Friday when we have another chance of rain and even a stronger cold front next weekend, Karen. So pick your favorite day, head on out to the fair. It looks pretty nice once we get past Sunday. And how do we get so perfect to get the rain overnight? I don't know. We must be living wow, a ride. Oh, that's great. It's because you're here. <laughs> I don't know about that, but thanks, Ed. All right. Well, there are several Morgan Nick photo ID days going on around the state this weekend. There will be one next to the First Security Bank building on Main Street in Cabot. That's tomorrow. You can take your child there between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. And in Heber Springs, they'll be making photo IDs at the Fall Festival on East Main Street. That event is going on between 8 and 5. And if you live in Jacksonville, head over to the South Bend Fire Station number one. The firefighters will be making photo IDs for kids between 9 and 3. For more information about Morgan Nick Photo ID Days, log on to our website at todaysthv.com and click on Community.
High schoolers all over the state are gearing up for Friday Night Football. Craig O'Neill is standing by live in Cabot, and we'll join him there for a THB pep rally in just a few minutes. Today's THV is sponsored by the Law Offices of Gary Green. Nursing home abuse is reaching epidemic proportions. Too many nursing home owners are more concerned with their bottom line than the proper care of their residents. Abuse in a nursing home is a crime. Those residents are protected by the same laws we live by. If someone in your family has been a victim, you can do something about it. Your efforts could even help raise the standards of care for all nursing homes. Call Law Offices of Gary Green. I'm a Ford truck man. That's all I drive. I ain't got no boundaries. I don't compromise. October is Ford Truck Month. Get zero down, zero percent financing, and zero payments until 2003 on all 2002 trucks and SUVs. Or choose up to $3,000 cash back from Ford F-150, America's best-selling truck, to Super Duty with the most powerful diesel engine in its class. Truck Month, zero down, zero percent, and zero payments until 2003 or up to $3,000 cash back. Play in your today's THB this morning. Look at this Jasmine. Anything can happen. Oh! It's a fun way to start your morning. Oh, wait, come on. Join BJ, Robin, and Tom weekdays on today's THB this morning. The Pulaski County Clerk's Office is working overtime to make sure every registered voter has a chance to cast their ballot. Some of the county's 230,000 voters have not been assigned their correct precincts. That could mean trouble if it's not fixed before early voting starts on October 21st. Hatton Weeks talked with Staley today and has more. Hatton. Karen, County Clerk Carolyn Staley told us today that about 20,000 voters who have not, have not been assigned polling places in the county's computer system, she says all of that information should be entered before early voting begins. If not, poll workers won't know what ballot to give voters. And in a related story in southwest Little Rock, voters will have a new polling place. That's because Wakefield Elementary School burned over the summer. The county clerk sent notices to about 3,200 residents in that area, residents like James Kelly. Wakefield did vote there and the school burned out and now they sent us a letter and I was supposed to be at Tabernacle Baptist Church on 4820 West 65th Street will be our next voting. Well, Kelly knows and if you did vote at Wakefield, contact the county clerk's office to find out exactly where you need to go to cast your ballot. Karen, back to you. Thanks, Hatton. Some election officials have expressed concern that if the problem isn't fixed, some voters may not show up at the polls. Well, Craig O'Neill is in Cabot tonight for THB Game Night. Craig? Well, Karen, uh, I'll let you know something. Uh, does the term <laughs> tar and feather mean anything to you? Because actually, uh, what's happened here in Cabot, it's not too pretty. Uh, they're not too pleased with me right now. It involves a prediction. We'll tell you about it right after Corey does his TV debut. Yes! Woo! More in a minute. Welcome back to Cabot, where it's homecoming, as you can tell by these beautiful faces. Now, exactly what is your title? The Jess Club Sweetheart. So these are all sweethearts? Yes, sir. How many sweethearts will we have here? About 25 or so. Man. The pregame festivities are going to take forever, <laughs> and then we'll have the game. And unfortunately for this group, I have picked Forest City to beat Cabot, and they're not too happy about that. And now they will try and talk me out of it. First of all, let's start with Sarah. Try and talk me out of it. Why Cabot over Forest City? Craig, see, um, we've gone to playoffs every year, and they have it. And when we win, I'm going to love seeing you in that chilling outfit here in one of our pep rallies. <laughs> See, the bet is that if for some strange reason Cabot beats Forest City, then I will wear a cheerleader outfit and dress up as a cheerleader at their next pep rally. Now, Stephanie, you want to convince me here? Well, you see, when you have Cabot's defense and offense, you get a team that is unstoppable, and we are going to love seeing you in those cheerleading skirts with those white legs of shining. Okay, all right, one more. First, Zach over here representing the band. Zach, you got any words of wisdom? Well, yeah, the reason why Cabot's going to win tonight is because we have the best band in the state, and once, it, well, it's band, it's the band that puts the fans in the stand, so okay. we're going to have the best halftime show, which is going to really pump up our team, or we're going to win. All right, well, let me think about this. All right, let me give you my prediction. Here's the official prediction as to what I think will happen. Let me go to it now. Uh, let me think. Um, I'm sorry, I'm sticking with Forest City. 
I'm sorry. Too much field. I mean, too, too wet a field, slippery ball. I know I'm reaching here. Go ahead and hate me. I'm going to stick with my prediction. We're also sticking with these predictions. Conway over North Little Rock. Bryant should beat Central. <laughs> McClellan, don't laugh at the hair. McClellan over Hall. Benton will beat Texarkana. And tune in tonight at 10 to see how these turn out. One thing for sure, we need your help. Call us when you get home and let us know the score of your game. 244-4564. Never keep a score to yourself. Call 244-4564. And while thousands of Arkansans will be streaming into football games, there's a hot ticket over at All Tell Arena tonight. It's the Lakers and the Memphis Grizzlies preseason NBA basketball. Close to 12,000 NBA fans are expected. The world champion Los Angeles Lakers will take the floor. This is a game three years in the making. Three years ago, the Lakers were in town, but it was the Rakers of Altel Arena that had drawn enough concern to cancel the game. Altel was brand new, and Raker beams were making headlines, so the game was canceled. But tonight, everything is go for L.A. and Memphis. Little Rock's Derek Fisher gave us a preview. Tonight's game is not just about a win or a loss because this isn't a real game. Um, tonight's game is more about giving some of our younger guys on both teams an opportunity to show themselves, show our coaches, show our management that they can play. Gennaro Pargo, who's a former Razorback, a lot of people will get a chance to see him play tonight. And Arkansas plays Auburn, and last year the Hogs watched a football version of a star is born. Auburn's outstanding running back last year against Arkansas. Carnell Williams had a great day. One year later, he's poised to attack an Arkansas defense looking to stop him. Fred Talley will start a tailback for the Hogs, but look for Darius Howard and Brandon Holmes to also carry the ball. Auburn looks to avenge last year's 42-17 loss. Kickoff 11-30, and Houston Nutt has a losing record in early kickoffs. And they're about to kick off Cabin in Forest City. We'll see what happens tonight. Back to you, Karen. Good talk and tough there in Cabin, Craig. If your weekend plans include heading out to the State Fair, Ed will have a last look at the forecast when we come back. Stay with us. What do we want? What do we want? Backed by overwhelming demand, Plain Chevrolet is tripling rebates up to $9,000. Forget this. Zero percent financing for up to 60 months. 2003 S10 pickups and Cavaliers. Regular cab and extended caps over autos. Blazers and Trailblazers. Even 2003 Tahoes and Suburbans. Just $189 down delivers. Payments from $189 a month. Triple rebates or zero percent financing. Rush to Crane Chevrolet now because the Crane team's got them. Mike Ross, who do you think you're... Ed is back with a good-looking weekend. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. You get your choice here. Tomorrow, partly cloudy and a high temperature near 80 degrees. Then by Sunday, much cooler, a high of 64. And, and next week looks great. Yeah, and rain in between tomorrow night. Wonderful. Have a great, safe weekend, everyone, and we'll see you back here at 10. Good night. In Las Vegas for the weekend, I'll bet the...